Molly, for more on those closing arguments in Georgia, we're joined by former federal prosecutor Andrew Cherkasky. Andrew, welcome. Thank you, Mike. So yesterday in closing arguments in Atlanta, one of the attorneys made the case that Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade have not been truthful. Let's play it. The relationship started in 2019. The relationship continued through 2020. The relationship continued through 2021. Um, looking at the cell phone communications, just in the first 11 months of 2021, over 2,000 calls, almost 9,800 texts. You know, I don't even think love-struck teenagers communicate that much. What's the impact of that on this case in Georgia? Well, there's various different types of analysis that the judge has to do in order to determine if Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade should be disqualified for, from further participation in the case. On one hand, it's a question of whether there's a, an actual or a uh, apparent conflict of interest. On the other hand, there's a, a question of uh, essentially forensic fraud or forensic uh, misleading of the court. And this is what gets into the uh, untruthful statements that are alleged to have been made. The judge is going to have to pour through the evidence to determine and what portions of testimony in combination with what portions of, for example, the, the cell phone records and the other answers that were given actually violate uh, the, the oath that was taken. And mm -hmm. I think that a, a very strong case was made that there were fabrications and exaggerations made along the way in order to protect their status on this case. Former President Trump was in court in Florida yesterday. That's the classified documents case. What's your assessment of that after yesterday's hearing? Well, certainly the fight yesterday was about when this uh, case is headed to trial. Florida has been a, a little bit more lenient in terms of uh, pushing out the trial date, but now the battle seems to be between a July date, an August date that even his defense counsel reluctantly indicated they could be, uh, that could be acceptable, but they were really pushing for it to be after the election. In either event, if it gets to a point where the trial is, for example, before the election and Donald Trump doesn't feel as though he's ready for trial, doesn't feel as though he's got trust in his defense team. The Supreme Court has uh, pretty clearly said that a defendant has the right to fire their defense team at least once in the course of a uh, prosecution. And that could, if he did such a thing, delay the case for many months, even if the, the court sets a trial date for August or July. Fascinating. So that could be a potential tactic if necessary. Um, so it's tough keeping all these dates and all these different cases straight. We have a timeline we can show our audience kind of showing some of it in flux. As you look at also the political calendar, you've got Super Tuesday coming up on Tuesday. Uh, but then you've got a bunch of the other cases, either, well, the New York State hush money case is supposed to start later this month. Uh, but you've got the Republican National Convention mid-July, TBD on the Georgia 2020 election trial. Uh, what about that, the fluidity of these dates and trying to keep all these different arguments straight? Well, I think there's uh, first and foremost a question of what Donald Trump's uh, interest is in all of that. Certainly every time one of his cases comes to the forefront and he finds himself in a courtroom, I think that there is uh, some degree of a political boost that he does get. So I, I don't know exactly what he wants along the way. The case that I'm looking at in the in the nearest future is the New York case. Mm -hmm. That case has been widely criticized. Uh, it is something that by almost all legal uh, analysis uh, should have been just a, a mere misdemeanor uh, type of allegation that probably should have never made its way to the place that it is at right now. I think Donald Trump has a, uh, a fantastic case to make there. There's a lot to come, and that's just in, in coming weeks. Uh, when we look at the, the full spectrum of cases ahead, I think it's going to be very difficult for prosecutors to get any of these cases to trial before the uh, election in mm -hmm. November, even if they're set for trial at this point. There's many different ways that that can be delayed, or ultimately the Supreme Court could determine that he does does in fact have immunity and none of these cases go, or at least the vast majority of them go. Fascinating. Former federal prosecutor Andrew Cherkasky, thank, thank you for your time and your analysis today. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.